Hello, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about the WIT Readathon. Now, as many of you know, August is Women in Translation Month. <laughs> I'm really struggling with words today, guys. And that was uh, created a few years ago, and I will link the original creator and her website down below. Uh, but for the past few years, uh, Matthew and now Jen and I have a Women in Translation Month readathon. This year, it's at the end of August, August 24th through the 31st, and it's just encouraging people to read more books by women in translation. Books in translation are some of the most difficult to make it here to the United States. Uh, the like publication percentage numbers are abysmal and oftentimes it's even more difficult for women in particular to be translated into English and to make it here into the American uh, book market. And so that's why we have this month, that's why we have this readathon to try to encourage people to read women in translation. So I love gamification, so for fun, we of course have a few prompts. So we have three prompts and then three bonus prompts, which are books that we each selected. And each one of those bonus prompts actually already fills one of the first three prompts. So, you know, we're here to help you out a bit. All right, so what are the three prompts? So the first one is to read a book by an indie press. A lot of the grunt work about bringing women in translation to the United States uh, are, is done by indie presses. You think about Europa, which has published uh, Elena Ferrante. Uh, they're doing great work bringing these titles here to the United States. And you think Tilted Access Press, which is started by Deborah Smith, and she particularly focuses on uh, titles over in Asia, but it has now expanded from that, and they're doing a great job as well. So that's the first prompt. The second prompt is to read a genre title. But the whole idea is to read a book uh, that is a romance title, a thriller, a mystery, science fiction, fantasy. There are so many great writers out there. I mean, I, just a few years ago, I read my first Japanese thriller and it was amazing. So definitely go check that out. And there are so many great books. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like often priority is given to books in translation that are literary fiction and more serious. But these titles are equally as awesome and you should definitely go check them out. So the third prompt is to read a book that was originally written in its original language pre-2000. That doesn't mean that it was also translated pre-2000, just the original language. So a good example of this would be Notes of a Crocodile, which I read recently and loved, and it was originally written uh, in the mid-90s, and it was translated, I believe, into English a few years ago. So that would be a great option. Matthew recommended it to me. So it also has an audiobook, which is a whole different video that we will talk about later about the need for more women in translation on audio, but we'll get there. All right, so those are our three main prompts. We also have three bonus prompts, and like I said, each of these also fits one of the original three prompts. So the first one is uh, my, is my pick, and it's uh, published by an indie press, so if you're looking for one of those, and it's published by Europa, which is, again, a favorite of mine. And that's Miyako Kawakami's Breast and Eggs, and this is translated by, wait for it, uh, Sam Bett and David Boyd, and again, it fits the indie press prompt. Lots of uses of the word prompt today, apparently. Um, all right, so the second one uh, is a genre title. It's a thriller, and this is from Matthew. And his pick is Seven Years of Darkness by Zhang Yu Zhang. And this is translated from Korean by Kim Chi Young. And this, again, fits the prompt too, so you can go check that out. Here is the cover. And that is the second bonus prompt. The last bonus prompt is from Jen. And her prompt fits the originally written pre-2000. And her pick is The Door by Magna Zobo. And this is translated from Hungarian by Len Rix. And this is, again, her pick for bonus prompt. And I really like a lot of what Jen has said about, you know, the importance of Eastern European languages. Um, a lot of people um, also may not realize that certain languages are more likely to be translated into English than others. So for example, a book written in Spanish is more likely to be translated into English than say Hungarian, which is why she chose this one. Uh, so definitely go check out her video and Matthew's video talking about the prompts and their picks and all sorts of things. You'll definitely want to go check that out. 
So there will be more content uh, over the course of Women in Translation Month and then we will end with like a lovely celebration of the Women in Translation Month readathon. You'll want to use this hashtag um, and of course all the details again. Check out the description box, follow the links, enjoy yourself. Um, I'm going to have a TBR and then also a recommendation of books in translation that also have audiobooks because that is really hard to find because we're going to talk about accessibility and how it's a problem. So anyway, thanks so much. Uh, that's it for now and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.